it just blows my mind how good this car is and that's why I feel confident enough to sign myself up for the Countach Rally at Monterey Car Week. They're doing a 50th anniversary of Lamborghini Countach Rally in Monterey during Car Week. It just kind of stumbled and then came back, stumbled and came back. That was really, really odd. And it's stalled. Come back, babe. Come back. Come on. Go down K96. Come back. Come back to me. It's back. Not a good place to do that. Come on. You almost caused a massive accident, car. There's doing it again. I'm in trouble. As you can see, that drive didn't go quite as expected, and the video today shows how totally unprepared I was for a Countach breakdown. I can't imagine this fix being cheap, but I have good news. If you guys want a chance to win awesome rewards, including an iPhone 12, our new sponsor, Rise of Kingdoms, has you covered. Rise of Kingdoms is a well-established mobile strategy game that combines real-time strategy with over 60 million players and a high user rating on both Google Play and App Store. In Rise of Kingdoms, there's 12 civilizations to choose from different periods of world history where you can recruit historic generals, train special soldiers of each civilization, and build the city of your dreams. Like traditional strategy games, you can upgrade your buildings, train soldiers, and research technology to make your kingdom more powerful. But you also get the exciting battle scenes that are realistic and well, exciting. With great graphics and 1.44 million square kilometers of virtual world with real mornings and evenings, real terrain, and vivid city scenes, Rise of Kingdoms takes you into a world that feels like the real thing. Rise of Kingdoms is constantly changing as well, including the new Viking civilization which is coming soon. Legendary Viking hero Ragnar Lodbrok and Bjorn Ironside lead the Viking warriors to rage. Download the game and choose Viking. Lead them from the lower river to conquer the world. Rise of Kingdoms is free to download and play, so support me and my generous sponsors and immerse yourself in endless gameplay of Rise of Kingdoms. Click the link in the description to download the game. We'll get you a civilization change prop worth $50 and massive resources. Participate in the contest in the second link as well to potentially win an iPhone 12 and lots of in-game resources. Welcome to Hoobies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and I wanted to document a very rare event on Hoobies Garage. If you look behind me, all three of my Lamborghinis are home. Not only that, all three of them are working, they're running and driving under their own power, they don't have any major issues that would stop me from taking them anywhere right now, which is an extremely rare event. It has never happened. Basically, these three cars haven't been together in six months, but they're home now. And probably the stupidest decision I have ever made was to keep all three of these. It is the ultimate level of automotive masochism to keep three weird Italian cars with zero parts availability and, uh, well, very difficult to work on going, but they're all going. I guess there's two Ferraris back there, among other things. Uh, but I'm going to try and justify why I'm keeping all three of these Lamborghinis in a way that makes somewhat sense, and then, well, we're going to break them up again because the Countach needs to go up to the Car Wizards to finally get some work. It really hasn't spent a night at the Car Wizards in my entire ownership of almost six months, which is just unbelievable. So just to recap, I bought this Lamborghini first, a 2006 Lamborghini Murcielago Roadster that Ed Bullion actually found for me. I say found for me, he found it for a much lower number and then sold it to me at a much higher number. Still the cheapest Murcielago Roadster or any Murcielago in the USA at the time, but it had a very, very bad transmission and a smoked Clutch. It took about four or five months for the wizard to sort this car out. We sourced a used transmission, a new clutch, and fixed some other odds and ends. And it has been a trooper ever since. I'd had this car for about a year and sold off my Gallardo because I thought it was super silly to have two Lamborghinis at once uh, when the unbelievable Lamborghini deal of a lifetime popped up. And that's these beauties, my 1997 Lamborghini Diablo VT Roadster and 1989 Lamborghini Countach 25th Anniversary Edition. I've had these cars for six months, six glorious months, well, 
I've had one of them for at least six months. This one has been up at the Car Wizards for five of those months waiting on various issues to get fixed. The saga of the steering rack on this Diablo and the many iterations of it, among the other issues that were fixed, were well documented in the last video I did on the Diablo, but it took a very, very long time. Quite expensive to sort through this thing, expensive tires. And meanwhile, the Countach has just been sitting and waiting. The wizard only wanted one Lamborghini up in a shop at a time just for insurance purposes. But this car, the Countach, was more or less ready to drive. It had a few minor leaks when the wizard looked it over and he changed the oil, we put new tires on it, and I've basically been driving it with no new issues that I know of. Well, one new annoying issue, and that's the door buzzer. It thinks the door is open intermittently or constantly, and it'll trigger it like it's doing Morse code. It is quite annoying, but other than that, there's really no issues that have popped up. But what it really, really needs is the climate control fix, because as we go into summer, I have no blower, I have no air conditioning, I have nothing. It doesn't blow anything. So I'm at the mercy of these little itty bitty windows for all of my ventilation, and that's just, well, not going to work. So now it's the Countach's turn to go up to the Car Wizard, which we shall do in a bit. But before we go, I kind of want to explain myself on why I'm justifying keeping all three of these Lamborghinis, and other than it being really cool YouTube, I don't think anybody else has this set. Uh, the reason in my head is because they all scratch a different itch. I was actually born in the 80s, but barely out of diapers when this car was built. But one of the first posters on my wall it inherited from my dad from his college poster wall was a Lamborghini Countach poster, the famous Alpine Lamborghini poster that's been on my wall for as long as I can remember, literally since I was a baby. So I have a connection with the Countach. The Diablo, on the other hand, I probably had every single scale model size you could have of this thing, tons of posters, every single magazine. I was obsessed with this car, so to have one in person to look at in the garage is just an unreal achievement. I also think it's the most beautiful of the three cars to look at, to where I feel like I could just stare at this car forever. It's also the most comfortable to drive. This one has a modern, nice driving experience, but it still has the gated shifter, but very comfortable. The Countach, definitely an old school Lamborghini driving experience, so they do drive very differently despite similar engines and similar well properties of everything. Now the Mercy Lago came out when I was in high school, young adulthood, when I started to get really obsessed with the old British Top Gear and this car was featured constantly every single iteration of it was in the old Top Gear and I fell in love with it obviously. Driving experience definitely the most modern, the fastest. This is the only car of the three where you could hit an on-ramp floor it with the paddle shifters and really feel that thrill of acceleration. It's also the most wild looking. I guess the Countach is pretty wild looking, but the color, this is a much more of a wow, look at me kind of Lamborghini than the other two. And since it's been painted on, since it has higher mileage for Lamborghini, 19,000 miles, it doesn't seem that high, but for Lamborghinis, that's higher mileage. And uh, well, there's been some holes cut in it and some other things. It is a car that I could drive and really not have to worry about. I can park it in a parking lot. I can take it on a road trip. If the bumper gets damaged, I can paint it again. So this is well, not really a beater Lamborghini, but it's one I can use comfortably and not have to worry about. So hopefully you haven't vomited all over yourself yet and discussed with my justification for keeping three Lamborghinis. It sounds just as ridiculous in my head as yours, I'm sure. Uh, let's hit the road with the Countach to the Car Wizard, and we'll look it over briefly again to see if anything else has popped up in the last well, five months or so. <laughs> Well, I've never driven my Countach in the rain before. I don't have a choice because I'm leaving tomorrow for Car Trek and uh, need to get this up there so the wizard can start working on it. Uh, but unfortunately, the windshield wipers don't work either. So I have no blower for defroster to stop this thing from fogging up. So my windows are down and open to the rain. I have no wipers, so visibility is limited. Not ideal, <laughs> but it works. This thing has just always worked. That's what's boggled my mind because the previous owner drove this car only 150 miles in the last eight years. And in the last six months, I've put about 400 miles on it. I had tires put on it and changed the oil, but this thing has no business being as good as it is, well behaved as it is, considering it's a old, weird Italian car and how long it's sat. It just blows my mind how good this car is. And that's why I feel confident enough to sign myself up for the Countach Rally 
at Monterey Car Week. They're doing a 50th anniversary of Lamborghini Countach rally in Monterey during Car Week. It just kind of stumbled and then came back, stumbled and came back. That was really, really odd. Um, anyway, I've signed this thing up for a rally in California where I get to drive it on Laguna Seca, uh, <laughs> Highway 1, all that stuff. Come on, baby. I was just talking about how good you were. Okie dokie. Ah, there it goes again. Clearly you don't like the rain. Hmm. And it's stalled. Come back, babe. Come back. Come on. Go down K96. Come back. Come back to me. Come back to me. It's back. Not a good place to do that. You almost caused a massive accident, car. There's doing it again. I'm in trouble. It stalled out again. Oh, it's coming back. It is definitely the Countach's turn. Hello. Oh, is it? What's happening now? Uh, well, I was just talking about how reliable the last six months have been with this Countach, and it started conking out. I sent you the video. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes the tachometer with it, though, when the ignition conks out and then comes back. It almost didn't come back once, and then, well, it got better the more I drove the car. And strangely, it kind of did it once before when I was pulling it out of the hangar. I left it idling for a little bit. It stalled out, and I had to wait a few minutes before it started again. So it may be a recurring issue. Hopefully, it's something that is replicatable that you can track down. It sounds electrical like you turned like It sounds as if you turned off the ignition, but you didn't. Like the engine computer's just shut off or yeah. something, right? Bad ground or something, yeah. Yeah, and there's the uh, other electrical issues that this car's always had. No blower motor. Uh, no wipers. Now I've just discovered that because never driven in the rain. Uh, no horn. There were a few minor little leaks that we might as well take care of while we're there. And then, uh, uh, yeah, we got a new ignition problem, which that definitely needs to get solved because I'm going to take this thing to California here in August. In August. We definitely need to get it solved then. Yeah. Well, I see, uh, chinchillas hard at work on the Mercedes. Oh, he's taking out the quarter window seal. Yep. He's got the AC working again. Really? Yeah, all it needed was recharged. So there wasn't a compressor that's failed or anything that stuff. Where was the leak? Actually, the service port valves. Really? They had been converted over in the past, and those valves were leaking. Okay, well, this ancient window seal can come out. It's whistling. Oh, the seats are gone, too. Mm -hmm. Get that horse hair out of there. Coolio. Well, the speedometer is fixed, too. Really? Yeah, we tested it with a drill motor. Mm -hmm. The speedometer works perfectly and quiet. It's nice and smooth. The problem was that piece we talked about, the broken gear. Very yeah. nice. So this car really, really isn't a turd. No, it's not a turd. But nobody wants it. It makes, it makes no sense. Uh, I've said it enough times in the last two videos. Uh, <laughs> but I know I'm driving the Azure home today, right? Yes. The mineral oil leaks after, are... After you pay the bill. <laughs> okay. All right. After I pay the bill yep. on the latest round of mineral oil leaks. Uh, but I'm really curious. You said... My Corvette would be running, is it? Is it? It is running. It starts up and runs, yes. Really? So I bought this thing. It had been sitting for years, and unfortunately, the engine that came with it wasn't original numbers matching. It was, uh, well, a goner. And uh, this is the one we sourced a very correct 427 for this car. And he says it runs. This is his cue. 
Oh. It seems like it just squirted. Did you put the clutch in? Yeah, that's all that was. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. We still have to get the timing set up. This is like the first start, basically. Oh okay. Good God. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> so timing set, obviously. It's also you can see that it's leaking oil from the oil filter down there. Yeah. The engine block on this is the old canister style filter, mm -hmm. like in 1966. We tried an adapter to put a spin-on filter and the adapter just leaks. Mm. So we're going to put the original style back on it. Okay, it's so the old school canister style rather than the spin-on yeah. style. All right, well that's gonna take a little bit of time, but I'm gonna be gone for 10 days, Amelia Island and Kartrick. You'll be at Amelia Island, but then you go yep. back. Yep. Uh, so some parts to order, I suppose then, and some, some timing to set so it doesn't do that again. It doesn't backfire. <laughs> I think you about jumped out of your pants. I, I, well, that something came out of my pants. That was uh... a... <laughs> okay, well, progress. Uh, fingers crossed on that. Popping up again to where you guys can figure out what's wrong. Because mm -hmm. that's a weird electrical thing. Very among weird. other weird electrical things. Uh, Mercedes I'm not worried about. Bentley Azure. I guess I'll head home in the lap of Jean-Claude Van Damme luxury. Well, not on... That doesn't sound right. But I'm, I'm going to go home in the Bentley. So, thank you for watching.